So <laughs> tell me how this came about. And what, what are you trying to do with this? Well, the biggest thing about this is it's um, it's um, 10 hours. It's a TV sh it's a TV show, but I was trying to think of it more like a movie. So it's like a, everybody says this, everybody says 10, like they're making a 10 hour movie. Mm. It's like a thing right now, people say. Like Ozark. Yeah, this really is a 10 hour movie mm. in the sense that the way most TV is structured is um, it's just designed to get you to click, every hour or half hour is designed to get you to click on the next hour, obviously, right? So um, that entails all kinds of things with plot and with how you have to like set things up and resolve them within mm. the hour and then leave other things hanging. And what I like about movies is it's just like one thing. So the idea here was like maybe audiences are ready for something where in the first hour you're getting into the story. I mean, there's crazy action. It's not like it's boring, but you're getting into the story. It's not, it's not like meant to resolve something in that first hour. And then in the second hour, you're getting a little bit deeper and you're learning a little bit more. And then in the third hour, and it keeps changing over the course and where you end up, I guarantee you where you end up in the last hour is not where you would have ever imagined in the first hour. Even though there's a lot about this that seems like it's about a woman that is kidnapped. So it's like a high pressure situation. She's kidnapped. And I kind of was thinking like, how would I tell this story, which is a fictional story. I mean, it does happen, right? Like today, mm -hmm. what's her name? Brittany, Brittany Griner. Yeah, yeah. Brittany Griner. Um, but how, how would that really go down if somebody was was held in a um, in a foreign country, in this case, in Venezuela? What would really happen if, as a couple like complicating factors, the woman who is kidnapped, who's a brilliant scientist, she's she's interested in, she does research into psychedelics, she's a psychopharmacologist she's down in the amazon looking for you know psychoactive compounds for research for addiction research but she also has like this relationship with the cia which is a little bit unclear what the depth of the relationship is so that's who gets kidnapped how would she go through that in real life like if we take that as a hypothesis that something like that could happen which clearly it could it's not like every day but americans do get rolled up in foreign countries how would she move through that experience and what would the experience be like for her and then what would happen if the two people closest to her her brother and her husband were both in special forces mm. and how would they deal with it in real life not in taken not that i, I like taken right. but not that version but like right. how would they actually deal with it and um, the idea was to 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 make like a ten hour movie with that as the as the as the like the plot engine, and then put inside of it pretty much everything else I've been thinking about for the last ten years, like all my other interests, like slammed into that plot, which is which is kind of a capacious enough story and a clear enough story because it's like obvious, like what you want to see happen, you want them to get her out, right. When you say all your other interests, what do you mean by that? Well, just whatever else I've been thinking. Like, I've been thinking a lot about other shit besides kidnapping. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a story about family, okay? It's a story about their relationship, the relationship between husband and wife. It's a story about honesty. It's a story about love. It's a story about how couples lie to each other and what the price of, of lying is. It's a story about men and how men relate to each other. Um, it, it, in that, you know, these two guys um, know each other well because they're in the same unit together, but they also have like a somewhat complicated past, and they have this this mission that they have to deal with. That's that's not like a. It's not like a. Um, it's not like a mission that has been given to them by the government. So it's not like their job. So it has a different quality to it because it's their, it's their person they love the most in the world. And, and so it's about how these two guys interact with each other. It's about representations of masculinity, which is something we can talk about. Um, it's about how the fucking world works, 
how would the CIA respond to a situation like that? And one of the things was like, there, there was always these conversations as I was writing the script, like who are the bad guys? Who are the bad guys? You always need a bad guy, particularly in a kidnapping story. The bad guys are obviously going to be the kidnappers. But, you know, I think a little bit about kind of trying to, when we talked about responsibility, trying to, trying to like get rid of some of that black and white thinking and give people something that has a little more gray in it. And so one of the things we do in the show is like, I'll put you inside the room of the rebels who are involved in the kidnapping. I'll, I, I want, I want you to understand who they are and where they're coming from. Cause just making them like mustache twirly bad guys isn't really, it's not really going to be that helpful to my final ultimate goal, which is to put you at the end of this 10 hours in a place that you didn't see coming and give you an experience that you didn't really think you were going to have and a series of thoughts and emotions that probably you haven't had in exactly this way before. Right. But if I give you the same shit you've always seen and I'm like, Oh, here's the bad guy. This is how the bad guy behaves. You know that you've seen the million bad guys. Then it's very hard for me to like, at the end of it, give you a new emotional response. And that's like, or a new, like our new thought process. And so I don't know. That's all the shit. <laughs> that's some of the shit I've been thinking about.